Hey, I'm Joe from JoeCollinTurner.com and TestTalks.com, a blog and podcast dedicated to all things test automation related. Today, I want to cover the top 12 automation trends for 2016. Number one, we're all testers now. As more and more companies make the shift left in the development process, testing and automation are no longer just an automation activity. That means the roles between developers and testers really are beginning to blur. From the beginning of the sprint, everyone's responsible for making the code testable and automatable from the beginning, not just one person or a team of people at the end of a sprint or at the end of a development life cycle. So I know how many people look at the World Quality Report, but the World Quality Report said that 67% of the folks surveyed are using DevOps practices. Now, I think I was a little shocked by that number. It's pretty high. But I know the company I'm working for is moving towards a more DevOps kind of pipeline. And I know a lot of other companies are doing the same. So I see DevOps as more and more as something like Agile was many years ago. Now teams are just doing it. I see DevOps as just being the same thing. It's a bunch of principles and best practices I think all companies are going to follow. Number three, BDD and TDD. So BDD really does focus on the user or the customer from the beginning. So before you even write a line of code, you're speaking with your three amigo sessions with your developers, your product owners, and your testers. The earlier you find bugs in the development lifecycle, the better off you're going to be. BDD and TDD helps drive that initiative by starting from the user's perspective from the very beginning before any code is ever written. And I think it's going to be a growing trend. Number four, Selenium and vendor tools. So this might be, some people might just not agree with this or completely hate it, but back in the day, it was either QTP or Selenium. They were both at odds and you were either in one camp or the other. But now I'm seeing an interesting thing and that is as a morphing of the tools together. So now vendors are really actually going out and embracing Selenium. So it's really a vendor-based tool acting like a wrapper on top of Selenium to give you some extra functionality that you don't get out of Selenium. Selenium is just an API. It's not a test tool. So I've been hearing more and more about JavaScript frameworks. You know, there's been an explosion of growth in the JavaScript framework usage. According to Dave Hefner, he's actually looked at a bunch of different statistics from the Selenium downloads. In 2015 alone, the JavaScript downloads for Selenium eclipsed all previous years combined. I've also been hearing a bunch of different Java frameworks popping up that people are using. A lot of UI type developers using AngularJS and those type of technologies really are embracing more and more testing. And with JavaScript frameworks becoming more and more popular, I just see that as a growing trend that more frameworks probably are going to start using JavaScript. Number six, visual validation testing. Now, a lot of people are familiar with functional based testing tools like QTP and Selenium. But visual validation testing is different, meaning that it ensures that the UI appears correctly to users. And a lot of times I see manual tests flagged as manual because the effort to make them automated is a huge effort. But using visual validation tools like Apply Tools makes it possible to automate some things that were traditionally hard to automate with functional test tools. Number seven, virtualization and continuization. So I know one of the biggest issues I face when I'm engaged in a test automation effort is the setup and management of our application under test. And so that requires a lot of servers having to be spun up that I have to work with another group and make an environment similar to our other environments. So we have a development environment, we have a QA environment, we have a manual test environment. We have all these environments we need to stand up and it takes a lot of time, effort and money. But using tools like virtualization and containerization, I think is really gonna be something that helps us spin up our environments quicker and manage them a lot quicker and better. And I just think as we move to DevOps principles, as we're trying to run our tests, after every build that we need to be able to spin up our environments as quickly as possible and tear them down and not have to worry about going to another group to, to ask them to create a server for us. So virtualization and continuization, definitely a growing trend. Now this is something that's been on my radar for a while, but I really think 2016, it's gonna happen even more. I think there've been some estimates that in 2020, there's gonna be over 50 billion objects connected to the internet. So I, I, an interesting point that Jonathan Wright brought up, Jonathan Wright's from Hitachi, and he said that when we talk about IoT, a lot of times we're talking more about hardware than software, and that testers really need to start almost embracing hardware like they do software. And that's probably gonna be really a cultural change for most testers. Number nine, microservices. So microservices really allow you to make your code really independent in such a way that if a change is made, you're making it just to one area or one place. So it really fits in really well with DevOps and continuous integration. Number 10, 
you've all heard probably shift left, but I've been hearing more about shift right. So shift right, when I think of shift right, I think testing and production, monitoring, being proactive. No longer do we just ship a piece of software and forget about it. So shift right allows us to monitor things in the wild, in production. Number 11, autonomous agents. And when I say autonomous agents, I'm talking about self-driving cars and things like drones. So before it may have been okay to ship a piece of software if 95% of the time it was passing. But with these types of things, you don't want things falling out of the sky and cars ramming into people. So you really need 99.9% .9 confidence that these applications are gonna perform well in the wild. And number 12, virtual reality. Whoa. So Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook recently mentioned that Facebook is working on virtual reality because they think it's the next major computing and communication platform. So those are my top 12 test automation trends for 2016. For more automation awesomeness, head on over to joecollinsherry.com or testtalks.com and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to never miss another piece of automation awesomeness.